Hold on, let me call somebody right quick. <laughs> the spirit, the spirit. Recording, it's recording. Welcome to another episode of the Flow TV. Uh, been quite a while, but I was doing this Bible study, and there was a word in the Bible study that really jumped out to the Lord. And I guess He gave me a word, and I never did finish it. I think it's been about two, three weeks now. I never did come online and say it, but um, that word is to tell us die, to tell us die. It's mentioned in the New Testament twice. Um, it means to bring to an end or to complete. It's paid in full. In the Gospel of John, one of Jesus' last words was, it is finished. He gave up his spirit on the cross. And I want to talk about that uh, briefly, just, you know, for a short moment, because sometimes we um, do stuff and it's not complete. It's not finished. And God sends us out to complete stuff. And it might not be our will. It might not be something we want to do. But in this moment, Jesus is declaring his fulfillment of the scriptures that they have been accomplished. This is a sign of of God. This is an act of God. This is the purpose of it all for him to save his friends and for us to have salvation if he dies on the cross. So sometimes our purpose and our goals and our destiny that God has given us is not necessarily just for us. It's for someone else just like us or someone else that's going through the same thing or someone else that has the same gift, you know, to understand and educate or to show exemplify you you know and you're supposed to come together as brothers and sisters and create that body that god created right now the body is looking a little disformed the body is looking a little dysfunctional the body is looking like it needs a handicap space you know because it has not been fulfilled it has not been completed it was paid in full in John 2, 1, 11, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. The fourth verse, he responds to her, woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. In the fifth verse, his mother said to him, to, said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. In this moment, he's telling them to fill the bottles, of, I think 20, 20 to 30 gallons of water. Fill it with water, and then they take it to the head of the wedding feast and he's telling them that um he's telling them that it is the best wine so he's confirming that this sign was complete he's confirming that this has happened because he never mentioned that i'm giving you wine he just said fill it and take it to him and he took it to him and he's like why did you guys save this best wine for the last but this is the moment where she's pushing him out there if you're pushed out prematurely it might not be what God told you to do, or you might go in a different direction than what your gift or your purpose or your destiny called you to do, but it may seem something similar to it. You know, you can be like, let's say if you're seductive or you're beautiful and you're doing these things and it's supposed to be used for God or you're singing and it's supposed to be used for God or you're dancing or anything like that. And it's supposed to be used for God. However, you're going in a different route and God is telling you to, to take it and use it as a gift to praise him or use it as a gift to, to show others. And ultimately, that's the point of it all, to connect it to the body. Everything connects to the body, whether it's a praise dance, praise team, pastor, bishop, uh, apostle, or prophet, or teacher, or anything of that, or a ministry of helps, any of the gifts that he gives. You know, your gift might even just be to stand there. Your gift might be able to secure the premises. Your gift may be to cut the lawn. It could be anything, and he's called you to do it. And it is a requirement. It is a mandate. It is a, a declaration of your life and what he willed for you to do. It's not your will. It's God's will. There was that verse where he was in uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. I cannot say that. Matthew 26, 36, 46. Jesus and his disciples prayed at the garden. And he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Then he said to the Lord in verse 39, going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. And then he goes a little further in verse 42. He went away a second time and prayed. And he said, my father, if it is 
not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it. May your will be done. So this here, he's giving up. And that's what most of us do. We give up our lives to Christ and let him guide us and go through the will and the call and the purpose and the destiny that he set before us. And oftentimes when I pray, I'm like, God, I want to make sure I have my dominion that you initially gave me. Because the dominion is a key part of the process. Or knowing you have dominion or having faith to use your dominion is a key part of the process because you'll be walking blindly you'll be walking not in your god nature because jesus needed his god nature in order to fulfill the will and the promise and the call of god on his life because they were wanting him to do other things they were wanting him to be something else and it's like who do you come in the name of who are you from who is this and ultimately it leads back to god or it should and this could be anything you know sometimes it's uh, an expectation from another person it doesn't necessarily have to be christianity or spiritual or religious it's like okay do you have an expectation from your parents do you have expectation in your marriage do you have an expectation to yourself that you've willed out to do or set out to do and that's something you're called to do like you can do that easily nobody else does it the same way you do it and if you don't complete it, you don't feel like your life is complete. You don't feel like you did anything in life. And most of my videos are motivational. They're hope. Um, they're to give you a future. They're to give you an understanding because I have had to walk the walk. I have walked that walk where it's like, whether it was in sales, um, whether it's being a single mother, um, whether it was just, you know, the battle is not mine. It's the Lord's, but it still feel like I'm fighting it. Um, whether it's the mental battle, whether it's like me repairing my mind or me repairing my ministry, because sometimes life happens and the will of God and the call of God is still on your life. And people are still looking at you like, where's that will? Where's that? Ultimately, at the end of the day, he's on that cross. He still has to finish and complete this final process to tell us that to bring to an end or complete paid in full, meaning gospel of John as Jesus last words, it is finished. He gave up his spirit on the cross. He's declaring his fulfillment of the scriptures that have already been accomplished for us, for you and me, and for our salvation and us to be saved. In John 19, verse 28, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. And then verse 29, this is where he says it. Uh, verse 29, he says it in verse 30. So verse 29, now there was set a vessel full of vinegar and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon his sisop and put it to his mouth. Now coming to verse 30 where he actually does say it is finished or to tell us that. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. This is a moment where he's fulfilling his purpose and you have to fulfill your purpose. Can't nobody else do that for you. Jesus only... Only you can do what he told you to do. It's a requirement for you. Now, you may have others that may help you in the process um, that may complete the task like he had disciples. But you have to complete it because you know what's next. You know what's coming because God is leading you and guiding you and giving you that vision and prophecy to foresee for your life. And it's your requirement. You know, he's going to hold you accountable. No one else is going to tell you what's next. No one else is going to help you with that next process so complete the assignment finish the task at hand despite or regardless whatever is happening he's not going to put too much on you that you can't bear so ask god <clears throat> what is my task what is the requirement what are you asking of me talk to others network with good people i think that was one of the processes that i was able to do network with decent people that were in the same thing because sometimes things may come out that you don't know but that doesn't mean throw your whole task on them like a whole jonathan where jonathan is like helping him but it's really him so you want to make sure that you have a jonathan but they're helping you in the process and they're not taking over the process and know what's required of you before to know what you're getting into, but don't allow it to stop you from getting into it. And if you get down the road and there's another requirement that's asked and it gets heavy, still complete the task at hand. Still complete what God has assigned and set for you to do. And if you do, he's not going to put too much on you that you can't bear. It gets more closer to God. He provides you more of what you need. And if things change, make sure you don't change. You know, sometimes people get to a place and they're like, their motive change <clears throat> the way they handle things change, um, their mindset change. Of course, you should evolve as a person. Um, that's not what I'm saying. 
make sure your heart doesn't change. Like if you have a heart of God and you're doing things for the ministry, make sure it doesn't change. And the task was for him to die on the cross. He completed it. He gave up his spirit, but willingly. He has to give it up willingly. Even though it's God's will and not his will, you still have to let go and let God. And if you don't let go and let God, the process is like you're beating up against the grain. It's like you're going against what God has set you out to do. Rest after your finished work. Make sure that you complete rest. You know, even though God rested on the, on the seventh day, we always have a task or hard work that we complete and we rest in it. And make sure that you get it done to tell us that. Much love. Be blessed. God's love.